Now, before we get into this video, severe weather is probably going to be back here. But let's just keep in mind now that just because we have some signals that show up on the models doesn't mean that everything you will see is going to be 100% accurate. I fully appreciate climatology just like almost every other meteorologist, but I feel like there's a time and a place to where it actually can come around. So if you hear anything about how, oh, this severe season is going to be kind of like this, or this hurricane season is going to be kind of like this, they're looking based off of the past and the patterns, but it does not always mean that it is exactly going to be just like that. Hell, you can probably ask every single person in the weather community how many times they've heard year after year that this year is going to be the year into which we're going to get an EF5, or 2011 is going to happen again, or we're going to have a significant hurricane season. The bottom line is, it's up to us to interpret what we've got. Sorry, but I've heard the same song and dance over and over again every single year, and all it does is just build up a lot of hype over something that isn't happening yet. Anyways, where were we? Oh yes, weather. We've got weather in the horizon. Well, what a surprise. We've got severe weather that is expected sometime next week. We can take a look at the categorical outlooks, though, between now and Friday, though. Uh, this is today for Wednesday. Not really a whole lot of stuff that's going to be happening besides some thunderstorms. Tomorrow, Thursday, and then here's Friday as well. Not really a whole lot of crazy stuff, you know, in my opinion at least. Uh, there might be some scattered showers and thunderstorms, maybe some snow in the northeast. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the video. Saturday, not really a whole lot. Sunday, there is a chance for something to happen here, all right? This is just going to be something to watch out for. But right now, nothing really here according to the Storm Prediction Center. Monday, not really a whole lot here according to what they say. This is, once again, really far out. So when I am about to show you what the severe weather is going to be possible, or at least here for Tuesday, this is some pretty high confidence. You don't really see a whole lot of 15% chance of severe weather in these style of forecasts here from the Storm Prediction Center. But we do have one, and it is a 15% chance for severe weather across portions of of the deep south and the southern plains uh, so definitely something to watch out over here in portions of arkansas as well as down into texas louisiana mississippi uh, this is going to be something that we're going to want to watch out for we talked about it a little bit earlier in yesterday's video so if you guys haven't watched that feel free to do so but it's definitely been a sign for the past few days that we're going to be seeing some stuff. But up until then, we can move on through. We can see that everything's been relatively quiet here. Heading into Thursday afternoon into Thursday night, our next system is going to be moving on through. It's not expected to be super significant, but it will bring some rain across portions of the northern mid-Atlantic into the northeast. And some areas that do get cold enough will indeed see some snow as well over here into portions of uh, New England as well as into portions of Ontario and Quebec. So definitely something to watch out for that. That will also bring in some cooler temperatures as well here on the backside. So do not be surprised if the warm weather that we've been dealing with kind of goes away for the next couple of days. After that, you can already see our next little system that's going to be moving on through along the border of Canada and the United States. Our Alberta Clipper system is going to be bringing some snow across portions of the prairies all the way down into the Great Lakes. And then, of course, back up into the northeast before that finally exits. But here is our next system that's going to be moving on through here. Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon, there's going to be a little bit of thunderstorms that could try to form over here. Here's your next system. Look at this. This is starting to move on through into portions of northern California. This is going to bring some rain across some areas over there, as well as some snow in the higher elevations of the Sierras. So this is definitely going to be something that's going to start to shift a little bit further on to the east. By the time we get into Tuesday morning, uh, we can start to see maybe some residual showers and thunderstorms from Monday night. It'll fully depend upon how much moisture is actually able to reside within this area in order for you to be able to get your strong thunderstorms. But as this continues to move on through, as I said, Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday night, we got a pretty big system over here. A lot of severe weather down here in the south. A lot of winter weather here that's pretty sporadic up north, uh, specifically in the areas here, the northwestern quadrant of this system. That will continue to be the case, especially as we head into Wednesday morning and into Wednesday afternoon as well. As well as the fact that this system will continue to head further and further east. It'll create more severe weather here for areas over here in the southeast. And of course, a lot more widespread winter weather up north as well. After that, there also could potentially be another system that could try and move on through. So that'll be something that we'll have to watch out for towards the end of next week. But the main thing here to watch is 
Sunday, all right, Sunday the 2nd, all the way through until about, I would say, Thursday the 6th as to when we could potentially see our next system try to move on through the area. We talked about some of our temperatures. Uh, let's get into our anomalies specifically. A lot of reds means temperatures that are above average. Of course, blues is the inverse of that. So we can see a lot of the United States right now has some temperatures above average, even some areas and portions of Canada. We're talking the prairies all the way over into the British Columbia, as well as into much of Ontario has above average temperatures. That is expected to kind of move away a little bit as our next cold system is going to be moving on through in the rear of our next system period that is going to be kind of pushing on through the uh, areas of the Great Lakes, moving on down into the Ohio Valley, as well as portions of the Northeast as well. You can see a lot of wide areas over here. We're talking about I would say 10 to 15 degrees below average. Some areas could get a lot lower than that, as you can see. But on one side, we have a lot of cooler temperatures. On the other side, we have a lot warmer temperatures over here as well. So it's kind of a flip-flop, almost like a yin and yang, except it's a little bit more of storm and not storm, if you know what I mean. A big ridge is starting to set up. A big high-pressure system is setting up over here in the western portions of the United States which makes things a lot nicer, at least up until we start to get our next system to move on through. As the system starts to build, as I said, heading into Tuesday, a lot of this warm air, a lot of this moisture is really going to try and settle across portions of the central United States, getting all the way up into portions of central Canada as well. Some temperatures could be almost 30 degrees above average, which is kind of crazy talking in the beginning of March where we can kind of get on the border of whether or not we could still see wintry stuff or we could see some spring severe weather stuff. So we definitely have the natural system for that. And then, of course, as that system moves on through, you could see the cold air kind of rushing behind it, following behind that system very slowly to give a little bit of relief from a lot of that heat. Uh, taking a look at specifically the temperatures here, at least for the next couple of days, we can see heading into Wednesday and Thursday, a lot of the heat is going to kind of stay pretty much to the south. There could be some areas over here in the Central Plains that could start to creep up a little bit into the 60s. That is definitely possible, but we have a lot of that cold air that is really going to try and surge on further south through, especially behind that system. You can take a look when our clipper system starts to move on through, and uh, once again, we're already talking about temperatures that get back to around freezing as well, getting all the way down as far south as portions of Kentucky and Missouri, so definitely something to note there as well before we finally head into our next system to where we could potentially see the rise, the increase again, once again, of the temperatures that we had earlier on this week. Moving on through... We want to take a look real quickly at some of the snowfall totals that could be possible here, at least within a 24-hour window, uh, especially with this Alberta clipper system. When this clipper system starts to move on through, uh, some of these areas could potentially see an upwards of a foot of snow. So definitely something to note here. Talking a little bit above a foot of snow over here in the southeastern portions of Ontario. Uh, doesn't really look too much like areas near Windsor is going to be seeing a whole lot of stuff. Toronto might see a little bit of stuff. But uh, really, it's going to kind of just be not as uh, big of a storm and just more of kind of uh, not really a last hurrah, but it's one of your final storms of the season, and you're expected to kind of see some of these storms that are kind of like this. Uh, not really a whole lot of relief compared to the storms that you guys have had over the past couple of weeks, but still, there is something that's kind of in and around that area. A lot of snow that is expected of cross portions of the Sierras as well, so expect a lot of snow packing over there. Ski resorts are definitely liking what they're seeing in that regard. We'll take a look at the total precipitation here within the span of 72 hours. This is basically going to kind of help us get an idea as to whether or not there could be any potential flooding threats. Really, all that I see here for right now is once we start to head into our system next week, there's going to be a lot of precipitation that's going to reside over here in the portions of the Deep South. This is a uh, basically going to be our flooding risk. This is uh, where areas could potentially start to congeal and congregate into flood-prone areas. 
We've seen multiple flash flood warnings start in that way. So really do not be surprised if there is any sort of flash flood warnings that could be issued in any of these areas, especially in stuff that is over here in these reds. And uh, honestly, this honestly might be a little bit skewed because it doesn't really account for runoff and those flood prone areas that I mentioned before. So once again, if you're in any sort of flood prone areas, it's recommended that when these storms move on through, not only do you have a way to get into a sturdy structure in case of strong, severe weather, but it's also going to be very much so recommended for you to be able to stay away from low laying areas, just in case if there is any sort of flooding that could potentially occur. Uh, moving on through, I wanna start to continue to talk about um, the specifics of this event heading into next week. The only problem, as I said at the beginning of the video, is models don't exactly tell you exactly what's going to happen. Even if it's, you know, eight hours away from an actual event, it still is not going to be exactly correct. But what it can do is it can kind of give us a general idea as to what potentially could happen. What's a general ballpark guesstimate? And so our general guesstimate here, at least with our wind shear here and our jet stream, is... Our system is going to be a lot stronger than what we've seen over the past couple of weeks, at least here recently. Uh, there is going to be a nice little dip in the jet stream here. It's going to try and pack a little bit of a punch here with some wind as this system moves on through from Thursday into Friday. Our next Alberta Clipper system will continue to do the same with that. Here is our first little system that's going to try and move on through here Sunday into Monday. It's a little small one, and it does have some stronger amounts of wind shear, but it doesn't really have a whole lot, and it's going to start to set up for our next one. And our next one doesn't exactly look super significant at the moment, but it will become stronger as it continues to move on through. And look at this. Wind shear starts to really just amplify as it continues to move on through this is what we call a short wave trough here it's kind of cut off a little bit more from the general jet stream uh, you can see even though it is troughing just like this this is right here uh, more of a bowling ball low that kind of develops right in here on top of the general flow of our jet stream this is going to add a lot of vorticity in this area as well as the fact of amplifying a lot of this wind shear as well, which could definitely help sustain supercells if the environment is favorable. So that's already one of the signs that I see. It's that this uh, jet stream here, this particular storm, the wind shear aloft is definitely going to be a lot stronger than it usually has been, as I said, over the past week or so. As this moves on through here as well, uh, we can see that there is some moisture that resides within this area. Earlier, we talked about how Sunday could potentially have a shot at producing some thunderstorms. There isn't really too much moisture that shows up here on the models here. All right, this is some moisture, but not a whole lot. We're talking 40s, maybe 50s at most, but that's not really enough for you to be able to get your strong storms. A lot of these storms... Uh, if they do form, are probably going to be elevated and probably will produce a lot of lightning, hail, and maybe even uh, some you know sudden downbursts that are possible. But there isn't really going to be a whole lot of tornado potential with that one. Heading into Monday, there is the chance for maybe some residual thunderstorms to try and develop over here on a dry line that could develop in Oklahoma and Texas. It might even reside a little bit further north depending upon how far this green actually gets up. We could potentially see at minimum, as I said, Oklahoma and Texas, but maybe Kansas could potentially get into the activity depending upon how much moisture is there. And then, of course, Tuesday, this is our main event here, all right? Tuesday is going to be our big one. Dry line setup, as probably as classic as you're going to get it. Big cold front that's going to try and surge on through. I'll tell you what, as soon as this cold front surges on through, that's going to be a big wind event. We'll probably kind of move on through into Wednesday as well. But in front of that, a lot of these thunderstorms are going to try and develop in this open warm sector. There's going to be a lot of space for at least one or two to potentially try to become significant. We'll see as to how significant and what type of threats could exist as we get closer on. I'm not expecting that answer until probably the weekend. But for right now, we have a lot of good signs that show there is probably going to be at least a, to some sort of degree that there is going to be some strong, severe weather that is possible here. Uh, heading off into Wednesday, this is where things start to become a little bit interesting as well, because as I mentioned, our cold front is going to try and surge on through. So I showed you all earlier, this is where our cold front is at. 
let's see where this cold front ends up getting towards as we get towards the line. Boom. It almost looks like the cold front is almost right behind the line. We're talking here on Wednesday night. We could potentially have thunderstorms that try and form out in front in the open warm sector. But if this cold front actually progresses a little bit further to the east, if it actually goes a little bit faster than anticipated, it could try and catch up with the line. We could be talking about a pretty big wind event over here in the portions of the southeast as well. Once again, too early to tell. We're still pretty far away. We're talking 180 hours away here, according to this model. And so there's definitely a lot of things that can change between then and now. But the big thing here is the signs are showing that this is kind of the general makeup of what this event could be. Could it be a little bit further to the west? Could it be a little bit further to the east? We'll get to our specifics and how bad it could be as we get closer and closer. But for right now, this is just the messenger saying this is what could potentially happen next week. If you guys would like to continue to stay tuned to the channel, we will have uploads every single day at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So feel free to stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media. Also, follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. I will catch you guys next time. So please stay safe up until then. And uh, yeah, see y'all.